shingles is a very, very common disease. And everybody knows that uh, shingles in, indeed comes from varicella. And the virus of varicella is stored in the neurological ganglia in the spinal cord. The problem is that with the decrease of the immunity, this virus can emerge again. The reason of the decrease are mainly the immunosenescence, but it could be also an immunosuppressive therapy or an immunosuppressive disease. We have well known that with AIDS infection, with a, a huge number of people, young people, uh, doing herpes zoster. If we consider uh, shingles in the general population, it's something common. It's roughly four out of thousand people. But if we look at the oldest patients, people, more than 50, 60 years old, the incidence is 12 out of uh, 1,000 people. So it's a growing incidence with a growing age. If we look at the clinical presentation, we know that shingles are not life-threatening diseases, except in immunosuppressed patients that can do a generalized uh, zoster infection, or then can do also encephalitis or some complication like that. And by the way, uh, hospitalization for zoster infection is not so rare as it was thought before. But the main problem is because it is a very painful disease. It is a painful disease at the beginning, at the acute phase, but the problem is when the duration of the pain which is called post-aspectic neuralgia, when it lasts more than three months. At this time, the disturb for the patient can be very important. We have shown in a recent study called uh, uh, Arizona study that seven to 10% of the patients at six to 12 months are always painful. And the oldest patients, I mean more than 70 years old, are those with the most pain uh, in the follow-up of, uh, of them. And one important thing we have to stress on is the fact that if you use uh, antiviral drugs such as icyclovir, there is no real reduction of the post herpestic neuralgia. In France, with 94% of patients receiving uh, antiviral drugs, Indeed, we had 7 to 10 percent of persistence of pain at 6 to 12 months. The impact of this pain is very important on the quality of life. And behind quality of life, we have to know that people are more depressed, their daily activity is also de declined, and it is for the old people mainly one of the reasons for their uh, tendency to be more dependent and it's for them a very real rupture from a real life to a not so good life. And the problem with HPN is how to treat it. It's difficult and the drugs that we can use are some uh, side effects on the people. That is anticholinergic drugs, opioid drugs, pregalbing drugs, and all these drugs has an impact. And it can be the reason for, the old, for this old patient to fall. And all, and all people that fall, it, it's a big problem for them because they are, uh, they are more conscious about their frailty, about their risk in the, in the life. So if antiviral drugs are not so potent, what can we do? We have just to prevent the disease. And it's why today we know that we have the possibility of a, a, a vaccine and uh, it has been shown in 2006 that we have a patent vaccine with a, a live vaccine, live itinerant vaccine, uh, which is uh, uh, per se Zostavax. And this vaccine can reduce not only uh, HPN, the HPN burden, but also uh, the cases of HPN uh, and also the case of herpes zoster itself. So it's why we are waiting today the introduction of this uh, uh, vaccine in different places in Europe. It has been already shown uh, down in the US and we know that it is uh, a vaccine which is very well tolerated. We also know that all the vaccines are uh, under study 
uh, I, I mean uh, a, sub, uh, a subunit uh, adjuvanted vaccine, and we are waiting for new results about this uh, new product. So today, we can think that we have possibilities to reduce the, the burden of herpes zoster, and naturally, we have to do that in the future. Thank you.